This is Mike Keneally. You're watching loudguitars.com. <laughs> Good morning, this is Pamela with LoudGuitars.com and I'm thrilled to be here at the Dean Markley booth with Mike Keneally. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. Thank you very much. Good, me too. You have quite a very diverse musical career from playing with orchestras, playing with the Zappas, playing with uh, Mr. Satriani, um, and I find that it's almost unfair that one person has so much talent. <laughs> oh, well, I, I I can't look at it that way, you know, because I'm always just like excited about what the next uh, musical experience is going to be, and uh, I always feel like I'm, you know, just just trying to beef up my skills to to meet whatever the next challenge is, you know. So it's it's I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but for me, I always I always just see how much farther I have to go that way. But but uh, thanks. <laughs> Look, it's, I also read your autobiography on Keneally.com, oh, cool. which is a great read. And you can also write. It's like there is no limit. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate. It. In the in the autobiography, you mentioned that you were addicted to making records. It's true. I I still have a real love for the you know the long form album and even with all very smart people in the industry saying that the album is dying and stuff I just can't let let it go I, I I like a listening experience that starts at one place takes you on a journey to the end point and you sit there and even if there's only a few thousand people left in the world who experience albums that way they need they need servicing too, you know, and that's and that's still the way I love to experience an album from 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 start to finish. So I just keep making them because I can't stop. Every time I finish a record, I'm already full of ideas for the next one. So I just keep going. Well, we're all grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, what are you working on right now, Mike? Right now, I'm working on an album called Scambot Two, which is the second in a trilogy. First album, uh, Scambot One, came out in 2009. And it's about this this little guy who's uh, just uh, his his um, his mind is being controlled by this uh, rich uh, jam uh, corporate magnet guy. He makes jam for a living, uh, and he's just wildly successful from the all the jam that he's sold. And and he has learned how to modify people's behavior by uh, virtue of all these really uh, sort of elaborate. Steampunk, steampunk-looking uh, switches and knobs that he have, has in his office. Uh, that's that's like the basic story of Scambot, but it's uh, musically, it's 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 sort of a, a a gathering place for whatever I feel like doing. So so the the style of the thing is kind of all over the place. But right now, I've been working with some tracks that I recorded with Chris Myers, who's the the drummer from uh, Umphrey's McGee, brilliant drummer, genius drummer, and. Uh, it feels very different from any uh, any recordings I've done in the past, so I'm having a lot of fun just uh, doing some overdubs and mixing and edits on these uh, recordings. It's about 40 minutes worth of stuff that I've been focused on for the last week or so. And uh, and there's going to be more uh, Satriani touring later this year and more touring with my own band. Uh, so I'm, as, as always, I, I have about three or four different things just kind of bubbling. And I see that a lot of the players that you play with once want to play with you again in other projects. Like I see um, Brian Beller, um, Marco Miniman, and so I see that there is some sort of like a consistency which is lovely. That must pull out some different ideas for you to be playing with these different players too. Yeah, these guys just follow me everywhere, you know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good feeling. It's fun for me to play with somebody like uh, you know Brian Beller, who has been the bass player for my band since uh, for the, oh, like 20 years now, a long, long time. We played together with Dweezil Zappa in the early 90s, and and he's followed me through a bunch of bands, a bunch of albums, and uh, and then when I started playing with Death Clock uh, a few years ago, and uh, Brendan Small, who's the mastermind behind Death Clock, asked me if he thought Brian would mind if, if he asked him to join as well, and and definitely not because Brian is a total metalhead. Uh, and then uh, I've been playing with Joe Satriani for a few years, and it was it was great. We had a, a band that was fantastic, and then Joe just got the urge to change things up. We recorded an album with with uh, Vinnie Caliuta and and Chris Cheney, so that was a, a big change. And then he said, 
uh, well, who do you recommend for bass and drums? And uh, and I, you know, I, I Brian Beller and Marco Miniman are like the, the two best guys I know. So I didn't know whether they were gonna have time or availability to do the Satriani thing, but they were like, yeah, we would love to do it. So playing with these guys who's playing I know so well in a new context, the Satriani context, is really fun because I'm familiar with them, but it's still it feels new. And then it's very new for Joe, and Joe is loving the change. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm grateful since you know it was my recommendation. It, it could have it, it, that it didn't all fall to pieces, but I knew with those guys it wouldn't. You know, uh, so we're having a great time in the in the Satriani band. Well, I thank you so much. I'm sorry we're being uh, we've got to wrap up, but I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Can't wait to watch you live again. Cool. Enjoy your day. Thanks so much. Thank you. This is Pamela at Dean Markley, signing in. <laughs>